What's up guys, Kevin here with Prometheum Forge, and today we're doing an assembly video for the gangplank uh, organization and transportation system for your gangs. So here we go, you got some materials on the table there. Um, I'm using wood glue, super glue, uh, and you saw some clamps there. Those are optional, but handy. So the first thing we're gonna walk through is um, marking the polarity on your magnets, and arguably this is the most important step. Um, so first of all, here's how you install the magnets into your little bases here. So with the smaller magnets, um, I use them stacked together like that and use them as a little push handle when they're all like that. And simply push it into the base of your mini and just like that, you're done. Uh, I used to use glue, I've kind of decided it's not needed, it's a real secure fit and I haven't had one fall out yet. So anyway, whatever polarity you decide, um, to uh, use for your models, just make sure it's the same for all your models, that north is north and south is south. And these magnets are unmarked, but um, you know it doesn't matter which way is north and which way is south. Just get them all the same. Um, and then what you're going to want to do is uh, lay out the rest of your magnets. So you can see here I laid them all out on a magnetic surface. And here I'm just using a ruler, but you could use a cookie sheet or whatever. Uh, another method to use is to have them all in a stack like that and then mark one side and again it doesn't matter if it's north or south just keep it consistent and as I mark each one I'm laying it out on my surface now the reason that I'm not um, sticking them back to themselves uh, is because um, the ink actually is it takes a second to dry from the sharpie so before when I've stacked them back together after marking them immediately uh, the ink gets on the top and the bottom so then your mark is useless because you got ink on both sides of the magnet so now you can see I'm going back on the other magnets and doing that first technique of uh, laying them all out first and now I'm marking them um, to allow the ink time to dry. So setting all that stuff aside and getting out the wood pieces. So just punch everything out, lay that stuff off to the side. And uh, there's the base tray and the other side of the base tray and now you can see I'm actually flipping all the pieces over. Um, this is going to help you get the glue on the correct uh, side and not in any of the places where it won't be needed. So you don't need a whole lot. Um, wood glue works here, PVA glue, whatever you want. Don't worry too much about getting the perfect alignment and I'll show you how we're going to do that in a, in a further step here. So I'm just kind of paying attention to those skinny parts right up front. That's one spot where uh, you need to make sure you get some glue. And then also that skinny uh, rail towards the back there. Make sure you get that. And again, you don't want too much here. It's going to make your cleanup easier um, when the glue oozes out the edges. Uh, if you use a little bit less, it's, it's a little easier to get it nice and clean. And you can kind of help the oozies by uh, smearing it a little bit. So now that I have all the pieces stacked, I'm going to install these tabs, and the tab's job is to get everything just perfectly aligned, so you don't have to worry about if your edges match up, because uh, they will once you get those tabs seated. And sometimes they're a little tricky to get in there, but just wiggle things around until they slot down all the way, and uh, then you know for a fact you got a perfect fit. By the way, the floors are numbered, you can see kind of in the middle there, uh, in case you're wondering if you get confused which, which order they go in. Alright, so now some clamps. Uh, clamps work great. Weight also works great. You can just put some heavy stuff on top of your board. That uh, does a great job. Um, the main place where the oozing glue matters is where I was just cleaning in the, the base tray up there. Um, everywhere else, it kind of doesn't matter. It's just cosmetic if you get it out of the way. It's going to look better if you get rid of it though, so I always do. And then a good tip is to uh, clamp your stuff for just a minute and it's going to make the glue um, ooze just a little bit more. So then you can go back and clean it up and, and you're good to go. Alright, with your base tray here, just go ahead and punch out all those little circles. Now you'll notice there's 13 of them and you're probably only going to use 10 or 9 depending on how big your gang is. So those circles do slot back uh, and they do have texture on them so they're going to look good if you, you know, use them as plugs to, to plug those circles that you're not using. Um, so keep track of those things. And then this one works kind of similarly to the other uh, parts where these tabs are going to make your alignment perfect. So get those tabs seated in there, and these ones come up from the bottom, so that way when you pull them from the top, because they're also your pull handles, uh, they don't rip out of there. So then um, just make sure your glue is nice and clean in those base circles, and mostly a cosmetic thing. Your bases are still going to fit, even if there's a little bit of glue on the inside there. And uh, clamping is also a good idea for that piece. I'm just testing the fit. There you go. Looks good. And um, do clamp that piece, though. 
All right, so now I am gluing the magnets into uh, the MDF. So the concept is I'm creating kind of a well for the magnet and it just slots right down in there. And for this build, I've chosen the black side, the marked side of the magnet to go up. Again, I don't know if it's north or south, I don't care, but as long as it's consistent, you're good to go. So the magnets are a pretty tight fit. Um, I just squeeze some super glue into that well and then just squish the magnet down in there. And that makes the super glue come up to the sides and coat the bottom and, and everything looks great. Um, here you're going to see an older technique that I used for gluing the magnets into the bases and I don't recommend this as much anymore. Uh, you'll see I used glue and I'm pushing them in there one by one. It's kind of tricky. Um, so yeah, not necessary with the glue. And there I'm using a little stick to seat that magnet. Um, you can glue them in there if you want. You'll get a stronger fit. It's all good. Um, and you're going to see me test the polarity. So that's really important. I just tested to make sure I got the, the magnet in there in the right way. Uh, with north and south facing the right directions. So now I'm getting ready to um, put the magnets into the baseboard and you'll see I flipped it over so now I'm, I'm working on the bottom of it and I'm putting these stickers uh, because these are what are, are going to create the bottom of that uh, well that we'll put the glue in that we want to squish the magnet into. Now I'm just using these label stickers. I got them for a couple bucks, uh, I think, at the grocery store. Uh, but you could use tape, scotch tape, masking tape, whatever. You just want to give yourself a little bottom to push against with the magnet. And while I've got the thing flipped over, I'm just installing the magnets on the bottom. And these are what keeps the, uh, the base tray, the gang tray, um, attached to the main board. So I got those installed. And you notice I won't test this for polarity because that would pull the magnets out of there while the glue is still wet. So I'm just going to set that aside. And now I'm going to go ahead and install the magnets for each one of my ganger bases. And again, just a little drop of super glue. And uh, when I put the magnet in there, that super glue will squish out to the sides, and it really does a great job of holding it in tight. So now here come the magnets. Um, sometimes it's a pretty tight fit, so you have to go back. And I use a little push rod so I don't get the glue all over my fingers, but you could just push them in there with your thumb if you don't care about super glue on your fingers. And again, just making sure that I'm consistent. All the black sides are up, so that should mean that all my gangers fit and stick. So just get a nice seated fit for all that magnets. You really don't want them sticking up because then your, uh, your models will be a little wobbly, less satisfying, less clicky. Get them seated in there. All right, so uh, this right here is just a little divider in case you want to use more dice. So the board is designed to be used for um, eight dice, but some people wanted the ability to do um, 12 dice. So you can subdivide that other uh, storage compartment. Um, and by creating this little divider, which is optional, you could then just glue it in wherever you want to uh, have a different amount of dice. So here you can see it's set up for eight dice, but you could use the next compartment over to have 12 dice and then put your tokens, you know, in the remaining spaces. All right, and if you purchase the extra display stand, uh, those columns slot together. I won't really show you how to do it. It's pretty simple. Magnets on the top and bottom, you know the drill. So those columns will end up looking like that once assembled. And when you want to set up your uh, gang board for display, just magnet them right to the bottom in those magnets that already exist for holding your base tray to the main board. And there you have it. All right, well, thanks for watching this video from Prometheum Forge. Uh, this product and many more are available at prometheumforge.com. And if you want all the latest updates and latest product uh, release information, be sure to go like us and follow us on Facebook. So happy gaming and thanks for watching.